many people are in here are engineers by background, data scientists, or anybody? Okay, so you're very familiar with uh, objective data, making decisions off of that. I want to tell you about a subjective belief I have that I hold very, very dearly, uh, and it's about the future of commerce, and I believe AR is probably uh, the biggest enabler and a complete step change in the way we can think of commerce today. So everybody talks about the killer app for AR. You just heard one, making vision possible. You've probably seen some others, including Pokemon Go. I, I don't think running around the park is the killer application and collecting them all, as fun as it is. Um, I actually think commerce is the most interesting application of AR today. And why does this happen, right? You think of historically, you used to uh, go to a market, play with you know, whatever the object is, and then you know, potentially uh, in the future you got a flyer in the mail, you called in, or you mailed, or you eventually were able to, to click online. Uh, and eventually you had all the power to buy things at your fingertips, which I, you know, is an incredible moment. But the reality is buying online kind of sucks, right? Why is the buying online kind of suck? Because the best you're going to get is maybe one image, right? One piece of product content. Uh, you know, maybe you get multiple images. And so, you know, if we think of the perfect buying experience as, you know, this asymptotic thing you might be able to get to, technology helps us get up that experience curve towards what is the most interesting. And I don't think we're there yet. And so I think there's a big shortfall in expectations of, wow, we can buy you know, anything from our mobile phones, and that's incredible, but we're just at the early parts of that. That's why I would say AR to me, as well as VR, is actually a big step change in, in closing that gap towards the perfect user experience. Uh, and so the belief I hold incredibly strongly is that mobile AR is really the only thing that matters. Look at this chart, and you know, there's some great data from uh, Tim over at uh, DigiCapital who's putting something on later today. If you see the little top slivers there, those are standalone VRs, console VRs, others. They're in the orders of tens of thousands. Um, and you know, mobile phones, you're now in the order of hundreds of millions of them out there. And so to me, I, I would say the only thing that matters is, is mobile AR. And that's why I actually think mobile commerce for AR is the killer app. Uh, I think it will be the thing that brings uh, AR to billions and billions of people, and it will be the first application that you know my grandmother will be using for AR. And so, you know, historically we're in the world of uh, generic commerce, and I think it becomes very, very personalized. And so, you know, let's just talk about the current state. We talked about this. Um, our our venture fund is active investors in companies like Salsify. Uh, this is a, an incredibly valuable problem. You know, Salsify is a company that's on track to go public over the next couple of years. Uh, and what they do is a very simple thing, which is four brands get product content to websites. That is literally what they do. So if you're a brand, you put your content to a single place, and then they can syndicate it out to Amazon and Walmart and others. Uh, and so just the the minimum part is getting product content online. And best in class, I mean truly the best in class e-commerce players today have things like, wow, a, another shot of the same product at a different angle, potentially a different color. And this is literally state of the art. And this increases conversion rates an incredible amount. You can literally double the size of your business in a certain period of time. So uh, e-commerce and what the frontier looks like, there's people doing uh, what's called cropped overlay. It's basically this ARIA sign, let's crop out the background, and you can put it in your environment. It doesn't look that great, uh, although it's you know, uh, in the future. If you're really lucky, you'll maybe have a 360 of an object. Wow, you can spin it. You know, the new shoe, Nike has um, invested very heavily to do this for every single one of their products, and that's just one brand. Um, if you're really, really lucky, uh, you might actually get the 3D of the object so you can understand what is this thing. This is the state of the art. This is where I'm investing right now is companies that can help deliver that uh, 3D object because it enables some really incredible things. When you have a 3D object, which is just a basic infrastructure thing, you know, like this microphone, how do you take a 360 shot of it? You can start to do some really, really interesting things. All of you are here at AR and Commerce, but this is one example. Um, of what you can render without even downloading an app, and this is just my desk over at Underscore. Um, 
but you know you get a much better contextual feel. The information density of this is an incredible, incredible thing, and it will completely change the way purchasing happens online. And what's the bottleneck? It's actually the 3D content, so that's where we're investing. Uh, so what you see here is you know how we think of it. it. Used to be a single picture, then you got more pictures, and now you'll get to the 3D object. And so our, our prediction at underscore is that every single object you buy online, most likely the high value at the beginning, will have an AR model of itself within the next five years. And so we think it's a pretty exciting thing. Uh, and it's not the killer application. The killer application for uh, commerce and AR uh, together is putting objects in space. And so here's some uh, examples. It's actually not color snap. This is Ray-Ban. Those glasses are not on my face. It's an interesting example. So these, these are really AR just rendered uh, glasses. Here's, this is my color, you know, this is Sephora. Um, actually, I had a bet somebody wouldn't, I wouldn't put that in there, but I did. Um, so th this to me is, um, you know, a perfect example. It's a company out of uh, Toronto called Modiface. Uh, got acquired by L'Oreal, so you can even tell big brands are starting to think about this. And the conversion rate increases they saw in this were on order of 50% larger. So think of that, if you had a $10 million business, it turns into a $20 million business overnight, just because you have an AR capability. So Color Snap, uh, an interesting one by Sherwin-Williams. Uh, this is our office, you wanna try what a new paint color looks like. Um, interesting example of that. Uh, or even you know, buying a car, you can now you know, put it in space. And then brands become very experiential too. You know, it's about how I use my brand. Uh, and this is a, a Porsche concept. Uh, which I, I find pretty exciting of, you know, it's not just the car, it's actually you can then play with it as well. Uh, and so we think it's going to every single category. Uh, this is the AR e-commerce landscape today. Pr very, very little, starting a little bit, and now we believe every single category is gonna be disrupted, starting with higher value uh, items, where it's a really considered purchase, uh, or is personal, so put glasses on your face, uh, or lipstick, or whatever it is. And so. We think AR is one of the things that will really help us uh, collapse the gap towards what is a perfect user experience. But the reality is actually that doesn't get asymptotic. Uh, I actually think the perfect user experience continues to get a higher and higher bar. And that's why uh, we're actually still investing along this. And so if anybody is building something cool, uh, feel free to, to reach out to me and get in touch. And, and thank you for your attention. Thank you.